Kathy. What? We're here. It is two freaking years. Two years. I'm Show finding it hard to realize feeling, feeling what that. that means for my life. I, d- <laughs> I don't even Let know. us not reevaluate our life choices. <laughs> Would you guys like to just go ahead and do a show? <laughs> well, let's do a show. The following show is for mature audiences only. Listener discretion is advised. And if you don't like it, please go fuck yourself. One, two, three, four. Do you feel your sex life is quite lame? Scared that your desires might be strange? Come and join the kinky world of play. Hello, and welcome to the Perverted Podcast, the show for 104 episodes where we have talked about the kinky adventures, lifestyle, pervert, yeah. We talked about stuff. Stuff. (laughs) Recording live from the Threshold Love Lab in North Hollywood, California, in front of our perverted studio audience. Hello, perverts! I'm Kathy. I'm Lazarus Touch. (laughs) Laz for short. You call me Laz. He he added touch. That's it's the full name. name. <laughs> Lazarus Touch. I am Lazarus Touch. I will touch uh, you. And I am Count Boogie, and this is, in fact, show uh, 104, and uh, it took about, I don't know what, a month to figure out the math that that does equal two years. Two it years. is simple math, but <laughs> it took us a week. It is. We have done a show we, without fail 104 weeks in a row, That's so right. that makes this our uh, two-year uh, anniversary perverted podcast that and is. Uh, my god <laughs> the evaluations the ev- <laughs> last has started singing already yes. i like to sing well we do i mean we do have actually more than one birthday so uh i'm not playing the goddamn jingle i'm just playing but it is uh some birthdays actually it was uh it was mark's birthday uh, a couple days ago. Hey. Uh, happy birthday happy to birthday. Uh, Mark. And uh, by the way, there's a lot of things. We'll get to we'll get to more Mark and her violations and things <laughs> uh, in a second. Uh, my birthday's on Saturday. <laughs> so I will be an old... How decrepit are you? I'm pretty decrepit. And, and uh, yeah, that's yeah. going to be bad. Um, but uh, but I, the f- number one, I don't know how this guy got in the chair. Uh, but I uh, invited I him. in. <laughs> <laughs> I live right next door. Three he went away. from <laughs> super fan to now he's uh, sitting guest hosting. That let that uh, be a lesson to you all. That's all you have to do <laughs> to get on the show and become right. a super fan. Just, right. just uh, pretend. Start sending Boogie lots of emails. Just Re- make them really long. Oh, God. No, 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 no. No, no. Just no, feel no, like, no. just shut up and get here. No, no. <laughs> Unger. What? <sighs> just wanted to make sure Unger was in the chat room. Uh, with of us. course I'm in the chat room. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Arnold with kitty ears. <laughs> kitty Arnold. So what? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> kitty Arnold. <laughs> this is good. I just want to make I sure. I can't have a soft side. <laughs> I'll be cat. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yes, Arnold. This is your sensitive <laughs> kitty side. Exactly. <laughs> Governor, <laughs> that was actually a really funny joke. <laughs> okay, I'll give you the point on that one. So Laz almost That's didn't right. uh, make it here. He was so excited about... Uh, about it, and we talked a little bit about it last week. So uh, you 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 suck at driving. I suck at driving, <laughs> but I'm really good at hitting guardrails. Did you actually <laughs> fall asleep at the wheel? Almost. I just lost enough focus that when I was taking a nice sweeping turn, the tire went a little off on the shoulder, and the grass and the dirt kind of pulled the rest <laughs> of the car. <laughs> Which means you went a little more off the shoulder than just a little off, and to hit like, the grass and like dirt. A cornfield of grass, and then <laughs> oh, maybe I should hit the brake. No, I can get back on the road. Boom, guardrail. <laughs> so the gu- not, not so the glancing if you blow. So if you would have just had head on post, if you would have had an extra like three, four hundred feet, you're saying you ah, really could have pulled it. Feet. You could have pulled it together. It was almost but bad. that guardrail that obviously stopped you from yes. going into some it other caved in the engine I'm sore as fuck <sighs> but the I'm engine, alive the engine. Lazarus <laughs> cannot be killed <laughs> so what it was was it like a dramatic a, story a like the beards are never more dangerous than when we're dead was the guardrail just protecting you from we a cow right. or was it uh, you know just was there a uh, cliff th- yeah there was a bit of a, a bit of a ditch I would have been dead in the ditch ever, everyone's fear oh my god he's probably dead in the ditch <laughs> almost <laughs> Because that's what I go to sleep at night. Yes, I hope, Lazarus, I, I hope okay. Lazarus is not dead in <laughs> not the dead ditch. Not dead in the ditch. God damn! I should call him. I should yeah, almost, it's very funny, but you did almost just yes. eat it. 
Like that engine weenie. came right through and tapped you on the knee. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. There's pictures on FET, if you don't believe me. That's that looks <laughs> pretty intense. <laughs> it caved in the skull of the car, the engine. And, but, uh, and then assume. what would we do without a super fan? We get we right. we would I, we it have would be a vacancy. Well, you would dedicate. We, we would the show have other to me, clearly. <laughs> yeah, c- clearly, <laughs> Memorial Day, I would be memorialized. <laughs> Absolutely, you keep telling yourself that. So, uh, <laughs> well, I'd be dead. I wouldn't know. All right, let's get on to okay. Uh, bef- okay, I'm going to mix up the order just a bit because Kathy, this no. is this is for you. What else is new? <laughs> this is the greatest story ever to share at a dungeon. We are at Threshold Dungeon. The Love Lab is right next door to the kitchen. Of threshold, so obviously it's my kinky beachfront property <laughs> that uh, that we live in here, and it is amazing. And sometimes I am privy to overhearing things oh. from the other tenants. I don't want to know that make being in a dungeon epic. <laughs> so okay, so on, uh, and I already talked to uh, to them about this. I can mention it. So uh, the monarchs, which is like a male head dominant uh, leather kind of group. Um, was here doing their big teaching day. So they had like five classes. So they were here the whole day. You know, lots of fun, great classes. So they're in the main room teaching their classes. So obviously there's lots of cars in the parking lot. That they know there's an event. Threshold is not the only uh, renter in this building. There are some studios. There's a couple music studios. And then there's this other place that, you know, does some repairs and whatever. And the repair place is literally on the other side of the main room of Threshold. Hmm. So I don't know what classes were being taught. I don't think it was any anything crazy. I mean, it was like, you know, boot blacking and, you know, you know probably other ropes and knives and stuff like that. Um, but there was a classroom full of people, and I'm taking a pee in the hallway. Not in the hallway, just, you know, <laughs> uh-huh. the bathroom in the uh-huh. hallway. <laughs> you know, so I'm there, and the doors, it's a long hallway, and then it's this this other renter. And the doors open. Sometimes they leave their door open. You can kind of, you know, see down, down the hall. And I'm peeing, and I hear what seems to be like bickering between a, 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 a man and a woman. And you know your favorite man that is back oh, there. Oh, yes. And um, there's apparently a woman, and they're kind of bickering, and it's getting a little more heightened. And I'm like, is this this isn't from the main room. This isn't like a role play class in the dungeon or something. This sounds like people in this place fighting. So I, like, go, and, you know, I stand in the hall, and I listen down the hall, and all of a sudden, like, at the top of this chick's lungs, you just hear her go, Fuck! Like she had had enough of this debate or whatever, but just screamed "fuck," and then you can hear the guy, your your buddy, um, my, my favorite, tenant your, your favorite the tenant that yeah. you've had some run-ins with. Um, all of a sudden, you can j- I couldn't hear what he was saying, but he was trying to like, you know calm her down like hey you know there's you know there's people in the you know in the other room or whatever and at the top of her lungs she screams i don't care what those sickos think (laughs) (laughs) oh my god how rude (laughs) she should care what us sickos think It was, you know, you have those moments. I try to get hate on perverted podcast. They don't give me authentic hate. It's always made up hate. This was hate. Oh, genuine my article God. at the top of her lungs, and you heard him. He's like, <laughs> and I could just because you know the the monarchs are kind of you know they're like you know they got the machismo and they you know I I would I just prayed to imaginary gods that everyone in that room heard that <laughs> because I, I but I listened and because you would have heard 80 people in a room laughing right hysterically <laughs> they do have that good and so I run in and they you know it didn't look like they heard and I told you know some of them afterwards they go oh my god that's huge that would have been amazing <laughs> So I wanted to be passive aggressive and write a sign in the hall that said "sickos this way." Nice. <laughs> I think you should have done that. Yes. Oh my god! I can't believe somebody would say that. that that's was, what they think about. Obviously. Was, well, duh. Anger <laughs> always sickos. gets honesty. <laughs> so I just thought, yes. Can I it, add a suggestion? You should really, really should have put two signs: "sickos who care what she thinks this way," <laughs> "sickos who don't <laughs> care what she thinks that way." Better to be nice. sickos than a psycho. Uh, huh? uh, oh. See, yes, because she seemed uh, a little unstable. Uh, yeah, I see is. what you did there. Uh, Very nice. 
Oh. I didn't want to tell you because I figured that was just the best thing I have wow. ever heard in my eight <laughs> years at Threadbold. I've often wondered what the other tenants thought of us, but I guess <laughs> now we know. Well, at least whoever this, I don't know if it was his wife or something, but it was awesome. Oh. I was just the, it was the greatest thing ever. So, um. God. So I can only top. Had to be a sicko. I can only top <laughs> this uh, by something. Mark, come over. All right. Now then, this show is going to be very Mark heavy because Mark is. It's our two year anniversary, so Mark's like, well, obviously you're going to do something to me, mm-hmm. and you know that's going to be exceptional. So yes, at the end of the show, we are actually going to be uh, gaping Mark's butthole. And I'm gonna shoot Nerf darts into her her uh, her butt. Pray and tell us how you will be accomplishing uh, said. Well, I have gaping. a speculum, and we're gonna like starting kind of halfway through the show. We're gonna put the butt plug in, and then we're gonna take the butt plug out, and then we'll I'm gonna put, put an inflatable plug. butt plug we'll in, plug. and then we're gonna kind of you know stretch it out a little bit, and then we're gonna put a speculum in, <laughs> and this is gonna take about a half hour. And then that's so. While we're be, talking about stuff, you're gonna be I'm gonna be stuff yes. In her butt, I'm basically. that's what we do on perverted podcast. Right. God damn it. So, Boogie in her butt. But this is actually... <laughs> Boogie in the butt. He keeps uh, singing. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Mark, are you... Regretting you, it now, aren't you? Are you sure about this? You want to do this? All right. This is a very important moment, yes, and I is. want you to all be very, very respectful. Uh, go stand over at the, uh, at the thing. Uh, as everyone knows... Um, uh, uh, everyone knows that uh, that Mark doesn't speak on the show. Okay, so um, because you know she has some privacy issues, um, you know, with things with school and whatever, and it's just nobody's goddamn business um, to uh, to interrupt her her life and whatever. Everyone has to hide, you know, because people think we're sickos behind Obviously. our back. <laughs> and uh, Do they care what we think, though. But I, I don't have an answer to that. <laughs> but Mark, for two years, has remained silent on the show, and um, and she's like, you know what? It's it's been two years. I've been a part of this show. She's been an amazing part of the show, and she um, she wanted to give her her uh, two year greetings to us. And so I this is this is Mark. Are you sure you want to do this? Mm-hmm. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Here's Mark. Hi, PP listeners. This is Mark. What a journey it's been being involved in such an amazing <laughs> podcast with amazing people. It's strange finally speaking to all of you when I've been silent all this time. There have been times when I wish I could offer my perspective on certain topics or just make silly comments. However, I found my place as co chat moderator, photographer, demo bottom for the host's wicked plans, worshiper of Boogie's cock. Well, I don't know where I was going with this, <laughs> but I'm ready for another great two years. Ha! <laughs> 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 wait, 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 wait. <laughs> <Get back>. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds just like her. Wow. <laughs> Mark. <laughs> Good for you. Those are the golden tones of my that little come here. That is amazing. Wow. Beautifully. Oh, that's... She gets such deep tones. She so sounds very... Different she sounds mic. very similar to Tranatang. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy, <laughs> Kathy Tranatang. There we um, go. That but is uh, the yeah, so now you all know uh, the joy that I get every time <laughs> uh-huh. uh, Mark the and I hang out, and, and we, you guys uh, are making love. And so and we make love. Okay. And, <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, in two years, uh, that was the only the second audible burp I have ever heard her make. And we got that. Nice. And I just played it over and over. And, <laughs> it, and so, obviously. Oh, my God. <sighs> That's quite a. This is a. Uh, the show's getting weird. We need a new direction. So let's have hunger grass. The general question. <laughs> Hunger! <laughs> what? <laughs> that was the world's longest potato mayhem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was really long. <laughs> wow. Sensitive Kitty Arnold. 
What? <laughs> you have, have a problem with this? <laughs> God, no. <laughs> Come on. Tell me to my face. Come on now. Kitty. <laughs> 104 of these, Kathy. <laughs> Literally. And some people and, have listened. And we've finally gotten to I've the listened. soft side of uh, We've gotten to the soft Arnold. side of Arnold. <laughs> I think this is really a good moment for There's you, Arnold. Think this is so, Arnold, uh... <laughs> We uh, we now have a new thing where we actually put a question to the chat room and see if they have any uh, anything entertaining for us. So what was today's question that we asked the chat room? So today's question was, what is your darkest taboo and have you acted upon it? And did you already put this to the chat room? I, I did it uh, half hour ago. Please. Please. Dude, I'm on top of it. I know my job. Oh, man. <laughs> Don't After 64 off. shows, I know my job. Come on. <laughs> you are a very, very aggressive kitty today, Arnold. Very. So, yeah. was there any responses? Um, a little bit. Uh, m- most people joked about it, right? Blindfold play. Uh, <laughs> Get it dark. Yeah. See, oh. blind ah. the dark. <laughs> God damn it. Play. Literal, <laughs> literal motherfuckers. They, they w- we also mentioned dirty instead of dark. If they didn't want to understand dark and went with, you know. Actual mm. lights out, so that led to things like diaper play and things like that. Uh. Not really meaning it, but dirty. <laughs> uh, but, but uh, our 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 old friends King and Pri- uh, King and Princess are in the room tonight. Yay. They, King and Princess. And they did mention two that they are interested in, but have not done yet. And those ones. Uh, figging. Ooh. Ah, mm. ginger in the butt. And knife play. Mm. Knife play. They have not done knife play. They have play. not that done knife play. It's a recent thing they've discovered, um, and it looks like they want to, but they haven't yet. Did you they tell them all the crazy things you do, Unger? <laughs> so what are some? Uh, of, <laughs> what are some of Unger's? Just to get the balls rolling. <laughs> No, no, I haven't. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, you got to kind of, you know, some of them have looked at my fetish list on the Fet Life. Stir and, away um, screaming. Yeah, at that point, they just got to give stir up. the pod. I think the one that most surprises me of yours is barbed wire flogging. What? What do you mean? Yeah, what? I like <laughs> blood play. I like needles. I like knives. It's, it's everything. <laughs> All of that together. Giving and receiving. And I like caning to an extent, so hey. <laughs> a little caning. Wow. <laughs> you know, he doesn't want to fucking get too crazy, you know. <laughs> when you're doing the barbed That's wire, the you're getting beaten with a barbed wire, you know, crop. <laughs> but, you know, maybe you'll throw in a little caning, you know, but not Well, no, too it's a barbed wire cane. Oh. 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 That's the thing. So I thought that that. Oh, okay, right. It's just a. It's a piece of barbed wire this long. Yes. With a duct tape handle. That's uh. all it is. And you get beaten with that. Damn. Yes. And I get beaten. And with Abyss it. has beaten you with that. Yes. That's uh, just some. Look at that. Dark dark they're cutting me open. Nasty well, stuff. if there's anything that they come up with that's uh, dark and 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 yeah, uh, we'll, fun. we'll keep discussing it. But we're also talking. We're kind of going back on the 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 um, Capri Suns and Dune buggies. Oh, again? <laughs> What's wrong with it? It's fantastic. <laughs> now we have giraffes driving the doom buggies. Oh my god. <laughs> Ooh. Don't I understand the chat. Oh my god. Opulence. God, Good thing there's no hazard. All types on fat life. Finger in the pee hole for some. It's a big delight. Read, read your thing. Yeah, we, we, we already asked people if we could read their shit, and they said, yeah. All right. Nice Thanks. intro. <laughs> I wrote it down for oh, you and everything. For your pee. <laughs> Peace Just Jesus Christ, you're For your fire. peace of mind, please know that every author of yeah, that we the go. author of every post we talk about has specifically. We gotta have maybe it's the chair. <laughs> Maybe it's the fact he's sitting in a abyss. It's it's, it's the just cur- that chair. It's, yes, it's I think we have to rewrite that. All right, but all right. Yes, we got permission. Right. So, Thank what do we got us. today, uh, Kathy? Oh, love. This is a post by Liz Kitty called "Why I Asked Your Permission to Play with Your D Type," and she says the short answer: consent. I do a lot of pickup play, and I've developed a personal code of ethics. I do not consent to playing with your D-type if it will hurt your feelings. In my first two DS relationships, my D-type brought me to tears by playing with someone else without communicating with me first or caring about my emotions. They were greedy, acting on their wants over the health of their current relationship. I do not want to do this. There is a specific type of... Uh, D-type that will be very offended by me asking you first. In my experience, this is the type that I don't want to play with. So their anger is a win for everyone that matters. If you're a D-type that's upset by reading this, take a moment to realize that you're being upset by me caring about your S-type's feelings. 
You, you chose this. <laughs> I did choose this. I chose this. You you go ahead and start. I got I got a lot of uh, a lot of uh, opinions on this. I I'm going to have an unpopular opinion because okay. I don't have a lot of um, sympathy for somebody who would consider that breaking your protocol. I, I think that that's polite and that's a good thing to do. Sure. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with someone asking the submissive, is it okay if I play with your dominant? I don't think there's anything wrong with that, particularly because you can't know everybody's dynamic, everybody's rules, everybody's protocol. And you can say, well, I guess I'll just default to the safest thing and approach the dominant instead of the submissive. I think that's bullshit. And I think there's absolutely nothing wrong with this. If that submissive is not allowed to talk to you, they have every right to say, I'm sorry, but this is none of my concern. Uh, you need to talk to my dominant. But I know that there are people who get pissed sure, off when sure. someone approaches the submissive first. I don't have any problem with this. And I, like I said, I know that's an unpopular I don't know if it's, uh, if it's necessarily unpo- uh, unpopular as much as it leaves out certain points of view. That you are now projecting your point of view on everyone. So I think it's a good point of view. I think it's amazing that she has that point of view for herself because she has a personal experience that she's very energized by that personal experience that she's had bad feelings, which I've had as well too. I've been on the other end where when I first came into the lifestyle, everyone said, you know, everyone discloses and, you know, if you're going to play with somebody's bottom, then if they have a relationship with them, then you should check with the top and blah, blah, blah. And there was all these conflicting things. So I got really butthurt when somebody, uh, you know, uh, approached uh, my bottom and started negotiating play with them and didn't, you know, just like say, hey, you know, I'm thinking of doing this. How do you feel? Because I was trained at that time that that's, uh, that was what you were supposed to do. But then found out that there's a much bigger picture to this. And that is only one aspect of, of how you approach uh play with somebody who's partnered with someone else because there are some variables where i have talked to bottoms that says i don't want some other submissive coming to me and challenging my power exchange with my dominant by including me in the decision making process of that my dominant and i have um a a power exchange where they are in charge And if I need to be talked to, then that is something that I've worked out with my dominant. So the negotiating, so if you were to say, ask the, like say you're, you want to play with a D type, whatever, uh, and you're on the bottom and you go, Hey, um, is it okay if I talk to your bottom about this to make sure that their feelings are okay? That would be something that was worked out between in a good relationship. That is something that's been worked out between the dominant and, and they're they're uh, they're submissive, so I don't think it's a bad um, idea to want to spare the feelings. It's also the other thing that I've heard uh, bottoms being pissed off about. Why are you assuming that I'm insecure like you are? Hmm. I'm actually very secure with that, and the fact that you're checking in with me is assuming that my feelings are so no, fragile. Quest- that I'm just telling you what I've heard. No, I'm not no, telling you what un- my feelings are. I don't I don't understand that because a question does not assume. It's you're doing that so that you don't assume. You are asking how do you how are you, how are you going to weigh in on this? The answer can be I, I got no issues with it. If you, if it would upset you, that's fine. But I got no issues with it. Or hey, I'm sorry, but our dynamic doesn't allow for that. Uh, simply approaching and asking the question, is it okay, does not break protocols that I'm a, that It doesn't I'm break your with. protocols, but, but what if it breaks their protocols? And see, obviously nowhere, she said she doesn't want to play yeah, yeah, with nowhere, that person, and that's fine. Nowhere in her post does she say that she approaches them first or she approaches them without permission, but she is at some point going to ask for permission from the other submissive. Okay, I got the I got I kind of got the impression from reading the post that she was taking control of the situation and saying I will be talking to the bottom regardless of what the top thinks. Oh no, I'm quite you know, that, you know that, that, that I read it I, very carefully I, and I would assume that it was in in the best case scenario and this is just my opinion um, that that would be if you were talking with the top you would say cuz I've asked that you know I don't really play with coupled bottoms anymore because it's just a pain in the ass um but i have asked you know is there somebody that i need to talk to you know i've asked that before and that because that puts the personal responsibility on the person now then obviously not everyone is responsible and just like this poster said some dominance and some bottoms are greedy assholes 
Um, and they won't disclose that there should be a conversation. But I think your first line of defense or your first line of approach should be to ask yourself, ask the person you want to play with, is there somebody that I need to talk to and about that, this? Yeah, I, I think it's just smart to, uh, uh, when you're talking to a dominant about playing with them, uh, to ask them first, what's, what's your protocol? Do you have any problems with me asking them? But at some point, I and they maybe have the I, I have the I I agree with her. Maybe that's why right. I, I I don't have a lot of sympathy with someone. If somebody were to say to me, "I'm sorry, but you know you're going to have to trust me. I'm the dominant. I don't allow people to speak to my submissive." That's absolutely fine. Mm. We won't be playing. Sure, because I absolutely need to know. And I and I'm not talking about pickup. Or players. if the if the if the dominant says my submissive. Actually, and I work through this, we will be talking about the fact we're playing. We will be going into details about the details that my bottom knows, but my bottom, my submissive, why I keep calling bottom if it's a dominant submissive, whatever. My submissive, male or female, doesn't matter. Um, my submissive is working through their things and wants the opportunity to work through if they have a jealousy or an insecurity or stuff like that. So once again, I just don't think it's a good idea to just assume that this is the conversation that needs to happen and just go talk to the bottom, you know, because then it's like well, now, the, now, now the dominance just a piece of meat that you want to get hit by because you're not. You're, yeah. I, uh, it's kind of like, about that. OK, we got a line of people. This is good. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Okay. This is good. Anthony was standing up first, but you're cuter. So fuck him. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I view it the same way as when I have any sort of relationship with someone who's poly. Like, I won't get involved with someone who's like, oh, don't worry, my wife knows and you just have to trust me. She doesn't want to hear anything about it. Uh -huh. I'm like, no, like, I need to be able to reach out and have that connection and make sure it's actually okay. If that's not what you do, that's fine, but we're not going to be doing anything then. That's that's okay. and and But understand that I have literally heard out of uh, submissives or other partners... I don't want, I've heard, I've actually heard it in negative ways. I don't want some bitch coming up to me and talking to me that he, he can do what he wants. I have decided that he can do what he wants and I don't want to hear about it. Or it makes them very uncomfortable that they're like, that is something you've decided on doing and I respect that. And so I've just, I've heard, I'm not talking about my opinion. My opinion is that everyone should talk and disclose my partners that I play with, I want to be interactive with everyone that I play with. So I want that conversation. But, but if I've you heard have that sort of non-disclosure sort of agreement, I think you have to be ready to accept the fact that a majority of people aren't going to be exactly. okay with and that. And I think yeah. that's fine. And, and this poster and you and Kathy and everyone can have that. But I think there needs to be an understanding that there are other points of view about this situation that aren't necessarily negative. It doesn't necessarily mean that the dominant male or female is being a controlling asshole or whatever. This is their dynamic that they, you have to at some point trust that I have had a years of relationship with my submissive and we have talked very thoroughly about this. Now it's not always the case, but never assume that somebody's dynamic hasn't been thoroughly worked on. And give him that chance to then talk about it. Yes, Anthony. <laughs> not as not as cute as Bell I'm Anthony. Yes. Sorry, I do my best as a guy. Yeah. Um, I'm really confused because we've gone a lot of different ways about <laughs> what we're talking about here. But the things that jumped out at me is, um, well, first of all, I, I, I kind of think I, I echo what Kathy originally was saying. I, to a certain extent, I don't feel like... I'm, it's my responsibility to know your secret protocol that only do you two know about uh, every time. Um, you know, and, I, and I, I'm getting to just simple things like uh, how dare you even talk to her about playing. Well, I don't even know you're in a relationship yet. We haven't even talked about that. Yeah, yet. yeah. You when you've got special protocols. Especially a pickup pick yeah, play. Yeah. I don't know yeah. who you're, you're in a relationship. Yeah. If you're like hot and ready to go. Yeah. And you've got a thou shalt not talk. Well, fuck, how do we know about that? You know, we don't have your rule book. You know, right. this is your thing. Maybe you need to kind of, you know, when she's out in public like that, there needs, you know, how are we supposed to know that? Um, well, it sounded like she knew that there was a relationship and that's why she was choosing who to ask first. Right. Yeah, I think um, we're tangenting on onto other things in pickup play that do happen. Yeah. And that they're who's, where does, 
some of the responsibility has to lie on both parties. Well, and that's the part about ethical polyamory, right? Who's the ethic on? It seems to me it's primarily on the people in the polyamorous relationship, right? Ultimately, that's them being uh, ethical, mm-hmm. you know, if they're like, yeah, if you're supposed to disclose yeah. or whatever, because I've heard a lot of those stories where, and I've had, uh, I've been caught in situations where. If, uh, Fuck you! You saw the one with the pussy pounding one, yeah, and that turned into a whole giant shitstorm because the bottom just I you know I've been flirting with her all day in an event and nobody else knew. And when I talked to them, I said, "Hey, you have what's going on in your thing?" And uh, and there, um, stop with the distracting Lazarus, please. Sorry. Um, uh, you're in your thing. And uh, she's like, oh, no, it's actually really cool and everything's cool and I'm totally down and whatever. And so then we started a play scene and I'm like, hey, you want to, you know, because, you know, that's my first play usually with people is gun punching. Uh, And she was (laughs) really wanted to do it. So I'm like, "Uh and apparently there just became this hovering of all of her protectors that she didn't inform me existed. And, and like, people were, like, literally, like, we're going to stop this scene, and it can turn into this whole thing. But that was clearly the bottom needed to tell me when I was talking to her about her relationship, how serious is this relationship, the fact that she downplayed that was misleading. Unethical. You know, so, I mean, she was hot, so, you know, whatever, you know. <laughs> what do you think, Les? Well... There can be like a feeler question, like, do you guys play with other people? Just to like to just start it off. Then from there you can determine who to ask first. But you have to, you, you don't know. You yeah, and it, and that's the thing about that post was that she didn't go into specifics. So I have no idea what she means when she says she's going to approach. Does that mean she's just going to ignore the dominant, walk right up to the submissive? But I do know that I will begin, especially even if it's pickup play. I, I said before, not if it's pickup play, but if it's pickup play and there are people that I know in the dungeon and I happen to know that they They're are in, in a, a relationship, relationship of course. I'm going to fucking ask first because this is my family, this is my club, and I'm not about to dive in without making one. 100% sure that everybody involved is okay with it. But right. some some people play and they're not exclusive and I've seen it go badly where one dom D-type, if we're using that term, asks the other D-type if he can play with the S-type and the D-type is like I'm not exclusive with her, you don't have to ask me. Yeah. And the S-type is like, why are you asking that motherfucker? You should be asking me. And that yeah. went Yeah, badly, yeah, on the other end, you know, you know yeah. sometimes, I, yeah. In my opinion, there's no reason to take yeah. offense at that. That's actually somebody who's trying to do the right thing, and yeah. you're taking offense because they couldn't read your but, mind. But she saw it as, like, a weak kind of, yeah, don't be such a pussy, just come up oh, and talk to me. That's harsh. And they worked it out through emails because he's kind of <laughs> awkward in person, and they're both friends of mine, so I'm like, no, he didn't mean it like that. Yeah. And you, I know you're a brat, so <laughs> you kind of <laughs> harsh is mellow a little, but that's cool. I think I'm a scene broker. The, the, less, the lesson here is there's a lot lot of possibilities a lot of opinions yeah i think the original idea that the poster had that you need to have a conversation uh with whoever you're going to play with and if you can get in that conversation is there somebody i need to talk to um and if you have a, your own protocol where you say i need to talk to your bottom to or, make sure or that there's I, no play yeah. or there's no play that is absolutely fine too yeah. is, and, is this something you you have ds relationships boogie is this something people have come up to you about? You have a ready-made answer? Yes, so you're not touching my property. Okay. That's, that's pretty <laughs> and people know this enough yeah. to yeah. not even ask. <laughs> yes, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, at least at least with Mark. Um, the one dick policy. <laughs> that's, the that's, one penis that's, policy. I'm the dick. <laughs> and if somebody, comes up, if somebody comes up to Mark, she knows to direct them towards you or just to like no, not she engage? Just says she says, he, she, I throws me under the bus and I tell her to. <laughs> Say my dom's a complete asshole. And he's territorial, and I don't play with uh, any other men but him. Cool. But we have a lot of girls, and she's she's bare. <laughs> she she <laughs> kind of balances out. Nice. You ask her why are you with this fucking asshole. She's like, I'm here for the pussy. Nice. <laughs> that's my little girl. Yeah, that's a little good girl. I make <laughs> it up to you. Yeah, plus tentacles. Yeah, tentacles. yeah that's right. Yeah, tentacles. Oh wait, did you wait. just sing tentacles? I did. Wait, <laughs> yes, hunger. Yeah, we have a few more things on uh, the... Wait, wait. Let's see. Oh, we have some the more... The talk is taboos, yeah. Some yes. more ask a chat things. Okay. Um, One, is, uh, asked to remain anonymous, but lost her virginity with people around her that knew that she was still a virgin and still don't know. Uh, 
so like other so people. So they didn't were, know she was a virgin. They at the did time? know she was a virgin. Okay, and think she still is, even though she lost it in front of right them. with them. Oh, right, right there. I don't understand. Okay, so was they this don't like, know what sex means. Was this like a blanket fort thing? Kind, where, yeah, so yeah, that's that, what it sounds like. Like in was, the closet or in a tent it, at a oh, campground exactly. or something like that. Something okay. along those lines. Okay. Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah. That's Notice dark. I'm a pervert because I literally just so like, how how can in? I is it in? how can I make this work? And I'm like, okay, I get it. Didn't even know where to go with that one. I get it. And uh, the other one was from Emily, yes. who you guys know. Dream, yes, uh, in her dreams. Wake yeah. up, Emily. Yes, Emily exactly. Her, it. her, <laughs> Emily. Yes. Um, about her D-type uh, urinating in her mouth. I think oh. she said. Okay. Oh, that is dark. She's done but that. Urinating. She hasn't. But these are so, these are her dark taboos. There's, there's that not after eating asparagus. I hope. Uh, gang bang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's a commitment right there. That's love. Okay, gang bang. <laughs> uh, duh, duh. See, it's way back there now because I didn't want to interrupt and, and things. But those two, definitely. Since when do you not want to interrupt? <laughs> well, I, I try to find a good spot. <laughs> <laughs> ah, pet me, Laz. The West don't, spot. don't get anger, <laughs> don't, anger don't, kitty mad. This is <laughs> passive aggressive right now that's going on. We you can don't go know active this. aggression. That's fine. You don't too. know <laughs> <laughs> because Lazarus almost Come died. Come on. Driving. I am invincible. Uh, Do it now. Until he kills oh, me. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> this is why we don't have that many dicks on the show. Come right? on, pet me. Do it now. Let's go. Oh, I'm having a great time. I don't know what you're talking Kathy, about. Kathy, this is called excess <laughs> testosterone. This is sausage dick factory. Dick. <laughs> this is this is now just uh, way I'm too. I'm just sorty. doing the Arno voice. Come on. This is <laughs> way too sorty. <laughs> if I would dream ogre, it would be a completely different t- dream ogre. Thing. Dream ogre. Oh, uh, Laz is coming back to the show. You're, I'll tell you're, you that you're right saying now. <laughs> ogre should be. I'll be cat. I, oh, I, I, God. Nice oh, that's, that's a good one there. Yeah. God. But you two agree mute. on There's that. There's mute one and <laughs> mute two. There. Ah. Okay. I am God. Thank you. Unmute Laz. He's our <laughs> guest host. I'm dying. <laughs> Jesus. Nobody can hear him. <laughs> I'm dying. Oh, I'm back. Okay. Good. Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ. <laughs> Turn off your light, Unger. Jeez. <sighs> oh, oh, and I really... Is this vaginas and paninuses, things we find interesting? This is the random topic we are gonna talk about now. But before that, <gasps> uh, I don't need gloves, I just There's need preparation that I just need the mental BDSM group. Uh, just to get the bottle. The oh you turned it upside down. Okay, the bottle of uh, the right there, the Doc yeah. Johnson. All right, come here. Before I mean you can prep for your, your thing. I'm prepping. Who's going to be listening to us while you're Mentally doing that? You're, well, prepping. it's not really allowed, uh, hopefully not a loud process. <laughs> so what was that mental was, BDSM group thing? I need, I need you to take off your panties, pumpkin. Oh my. We have affiliate groups, Ooh. and every once in a while we give a shout out and we forgot. Oh, that's right. Mental BDSM. That is an amazing group. If you want to talk about amazing. mind fuckery, humiliation, you, do you want to grab Mark's butt? Kathy gets that privilege. Thank you. Ooh, thank that. you, Mark. Um, so yes. Oh wait, I'm sorry. Protocol. Ever. Was I supposed to thank you? Y- yes. <laughs> I don't know what the protocol is. Jesus, you're a dick. <laughs> you are a dick. I let you uh, touch. Me. I We've like achieve nudity. I like dick. I am not a dick. Well, you are what you. Oh. Uh, That's why I'm a pussy. Yeah, you All brought right. him. You Let's brought him here, Kathy. And he's coming back. That's Let's so talk so about uh, demisexuality. Demisexuality. Yes, because both Mark and I are demisexual. Oh, goody. Which is kind of a made up. Well, it is a made up word, not kind of. Well, they're all made up. All words true. are made up. Everything. Well, this is a Grip it. not official made up word. Grip my finger. Grip, Grip. my finger. <laughs> are you girl. talking Where to Where do you think his finger Mark? is? Any guesses? <laughs> Grip it. Grip it. Oh, that's a good girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's hiding her face. Oh, she's a good girl. Tilt your butt over her. Okay, go ahead, you guys. Yeah. Well, yeah. demisexuality <laughs> Read your notes. to me Spread em. is that connection precedes attraction. Very true. That's it. We're done. So I need to that's be, the definition. That's the definition, <laughs> and we're done. Thank you. No, but, you know, there's people that are physically attractive, sure, but if they're fucking assholes, then your connection to them drops, and then the attraction drops. You don't really want to play with an asshole do you, <laughs> unless do you're playing with someone's asshole that's different <laughs> like boogie's doing now like boogie's doing exactly. now how many fingers you got in there boogie uh, we're just now just one the jewel is now oh it's the making the uh, it's about to make that little click oh little pop. and in there oh. you go. and everybody and it's in. we've got giggles out, little jewel oh pretty jewel Ooh, pretty. Yay. i am so pretty it is very pretty jewel where i shitty <laughs> oh god <laughs> 
Don't you dare. Sorry. No scat play here. Don't you dare defile my fucking girl. Can you please go get me a paper towel? Thank you. Oh. Uh huh. Go on. Well, I was. For many years, I was always like, well, I just take things slow in the vanilla world. And I didn't have this term that kind of encapsulated that, yeah, I just need a connection first. Why is that so difficult to understand? I lost my virginity at 26 because I wanted a girlfriend first. Not Damn. A, not a hooker. I thought I all my waited friends were a gonna, long time. All my friends were going to buy me a hooker. I'm like, no, no, it's okay. I don't want one. I want a, someone I connect with. Oh, an actual hooker. You're, I, I yeah. thought you were just degrading all women that no, had sex no. outside of a relationship the first time. Well, <laughs> no, no, I guess Because that's what it sounded like. You're like, I hey, want a relationship. Not some hooker. Not some whore. Not some whore that Hoo-ha. would actually have sex without being in a relationship with me. A little judgy there. Well, that would be payment. Slut would so be you're actually So you're actually yeah. talking about an actual hooker. I'm actually talking about a prostitute. They wanted to buy Which me is called a sex worker. Sex worker. I'm sure they'd be lovely. I'd probably wind up just chatting. <laughs> 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 but I had a girlfriend, and it worked out, and I was glad I waited, and it was awesome, and oh. lots of fucking ensued. So do you find, like, this? what happens to me is that I could meet someone who just looks like a perfectly normal human being, and I register like all me. of their traits. Exactly. And then suddenly I get to know them, and they almost in a weird way will transform before my eyes. If I'm, they I become more, more attractive. Yes. yes. And people don't understand. No boogie doesn't really understand that. He's said before he has trouble understanding demisexuality and why, what? I even though he has, it. I, you've literally said, no, I don't understand you guys. I mean, the no. opposite, the opposite way is that you see someone who's really physically attractive. You get to know them. You're like, Oh my fucking God, I got away from her. Get away from that person. <laughs> and that's like, people go through that and they don't call themselves demisexual. I have demisexual, uh, I, once it, I have, oh, of course. Um, I think everybody. Uh, does. Intimacy can. I can just build intimacy at different levels with different people. Obviously, Mark and I have been together now. We'll be coming up on three years in a couple months, and mm-hmm. uh, which is amazingly uh, long for me. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, so, obviously, there's level of intimacy that has built because of that relationship that will not happen any other way other than taking that incredible investment of time with somebody else. I can just also have what I feel is intimacy, not necessarily like bonding, but intimacy with people that stimulate me much quicker. Um, It can be physical. There can be a physical attraction. There can be uh, a desire for kink. Um, You know, like they have, they're, they're really curious about a type of kink that I'm really into and I want to take them on that journey. But it's still a level of intimacy that if I don't have that connection with you, if I don't feel that interchange with you, there's not going to be a second yeah, play. it can happen immediately. It can happen over time. It, there's no, like, time frame on it. Yeah, so, I, so there are elements of demisexuality to everybody, I, and yeah. I get that. That's perfectly normal. But I think people who claim the label of being demisexual are ones who... Because I've talked to Mark about this, and we feel the same way. It's... You see somebody in there. It t- I've always described it as like a cardboard cutout, and I know that she's described. She has it the, as the just bubbles. A, yeah, she it's just, just sees like people this, as spheres. Yeah, <laughs> it's just this is a human being with two eyes and a nose and a mouth, and they got all the body parts, and and everything is there. And I can register that this one has long hair and this one has short hair, and it, I, I see who they are. But they don't register in in a sexual way. They don't register in a friendship way. They don't register in any way until I get to know them, and that personality will transform for me. So I I I get no uh, sexual attraction or any uh, anything else from that person until I get to know them. And I've always like you. I thought I'm I I just defined it as I like to take things slow. I yeah, like right. to get to know the person, and then I realize it's just it it actually uh, affects physically what I see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I lived in L.A. for twenty years, and pretty people are everywhere, and a lot of them are fucking assholes. <laughs> <laughs> and so you're like, okay, pretty is not the deciding factor for me. And so someone that, who I first see, I just didn't take a second look at, but I get to know, and I'm like, you're way more attractive than I thought. <laughs> I think there are, I mean, there's definitely people, we're talking, and I think a lot of people get into the BDSM lifestyle because we crave deeper levels of intimacy. Maybe we had relationships in the past where there wasn't intimacy and we didn't understand, you know, the intensity that happens during sadomasochistic play is a special kind, because you're going on a journey with somebody Mm -hmm. physically and it takes a lot of concentration and a lot of focus. 
and trust. therefore that builds trust and that builds uh, intimacy. Whereas I think a lot of people outside who don't seek out uh, the BDSM or kink uh, types of lifestyle or interactions with other people, um, maybe some of those people are uh, very kind of surfacey in their desires and there are a lot of and this is predominantly with dudes that it's like hey it i don't really care about this person it really is about me and i think those are the people that kind of turn us off right is when people are just very let's and it's the same thing in the lifestyle when people uh, i had someone that i played with recently and and literally they just mark and i were doing a play on this person and i did fire play and literally, they just, you know, okay, this is good. 45 minutes of really trying to give that experience. And they just kind of, you know, oh, the, you did very good. Literally hopped up the table, went, ran off with her friends outside the room. Mark's staring at me, and I just wave at the empty doorway and say, you're welcome. <laughs> so <laughs> some people are just very into their own experiences, and they're not really looking for intimacy. And there's really nothing wrong with it. You should disclose that. But um, yeah. it, there's really nothing wrong with that. But I think it's very interesting that, in the BDSM lifestyle, we find more and more people that are demisexual to some extent because we're, I, I don't know if there's been studies on this or whatever, but I think the nature of what we do shows that there is a desire for more intimacy among kinky people than It's beyond the skin deep. Yes. <laughs> Even if you cut it, the skin. It's, Yes. <laughs> I don't know where you're going with that. I don't know where he's <laughs> going with that either. I'm gonna Lazarus touch. Oh Lazarus. <laughs> <laughs> when all else fails, say your name. <laughs> say your name. <laughs> Lazarus, Lazarus touch. No. It's a turn on. He's not it's getting. Turn on. He's not getting a jingle. It's just. I not. make my own jingles. <laughs> hey, Rockstar, can you unplug and hand me that uh, camera back there? I just, just hand it to me. Just unplug it and hand it to me so it's over here. Because uh, uh, Anthony will Submission. be videotaping uh, some of the magic. Not right now. You know, I'll let you know. Um, all right. So, uh, oh, wait a minute. So we should do this. Oh, it's time. Gosh, things are moving quickly. Um, I'm going to need you guys to switch positions because now I'm going to go over uh, to Pole here. Position. And uh, we're going to actually uh, do the... Uh, the inflatable portion of our... Uh, Which means our you're going to do what? I'm going to put the thing in her. It's going to be some fucking advice, but I'm going to... Uh, uh, all right, so basically, Get we're going to talk about some fucking advice. No, no, no. We're going to talk about putting a butt plug in and inflating it. Uh, but then we're going to do Bump some fucking up. advice. Uh, he's going to go put an inflatable so butt plug. I need bug. you to probably now be naked. Can you hear me over here, Kathy? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, okay, yeah. I almost just clocked Mark with a fucking swinging microphone. A big swinging dick. All right. <laughs> so now, hands and knees. <laughs> All right. Ooh, sparkly butt plug. All right, I'm going to glove up view. for this. Look at this. Is it good? Very nice. She likes it's blue. She has a bigger blue one. It's very but, pretty uh, and sparkly. Pretty. It looks it like a giant very, diamond. Very, very And I'd be a butt plug. So we're going to take this display. out. Yes. And, uh, and then it's radio, we try, can't stop. Uh, <laughs> Belle, could you please put a condom on the inflatable butt plug? It's a whole process. Kathy. I see it's yes. a process. It a it's process. taking quite a while. So first you enlarged her asshole a little bit with the jewel butt plug. The jewel, to give her a little mm. bit of time so that way so that way the muscles uh, relax. Huh? Okay, Belle, there you go. Okay. And now... Oh, Daddy, I open packages. That's what I do. Uh -huh. He's applied so, the rubber and, gloves. And one of the things, if you're going to be doing gaping or that type of ass play, you want it to be gradual. It's very easy to tear. Uh, it's very easy to tear the Stinkers. opening of the anus and get a fissure, which is going to kind of end all of your fun. So, um, which, by the way, that's a... I told uh, Unger my new clown name is going to be Mr. Fissures. That's <laughs> uh, <laughs> wrong. That's wrong. Because of, of that. But, but you really, if you want to do this play, you have to be very gentle. And that's why I didn't want to leave it in the whole hour, because sometimes it'll get a little dry uh, around the butt plug, and the lube will dry up, and then... I love the look on Kathy's mm. face. As I'm it's going to pop out, and it's, it's going to go out shoot across the room. The wall on the shoot other across side. Across <laughs> okay, just relax, yeah. pumpkin. <laughs> All right. So Try to hit the I'm perverted gonna... podcast poster. So when you pull, you don't just yank it out. You're going to give little tugs and mouth. kind of, you're kind of teasing the opening to kind of let the muscles relax and contract. 
And then we're coming out. And then pop. Yeah, a little pop. pop. Goes the butt plug. Okay, very good. Everything's good. Okay. I'm going to go ahead boy. and put the butt plug inside of this glove so everyone doesn't stare at it. Because <laughs> people are perverts. Once more again, lube. lube, lube, and more lube. lube. Also very important to know that uh, because you are working with the butt and a lot of lube. You need more lube there. The danger of UTIs Just is very important. So after you do mm. any butt play whatsoever, go and shower very thoroughly and wash your genitalia, especially if you're a female. Uh, because the lube with the butt stuff can actually get in the urethra and give you a UTI. We've had a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. Especially in the position okay, she's in. I don't want that. I am using water-based lube. You she's can dripping. use silicone. Thank you very much, Anthony, for asking. Either water-based or silicone is fine, but once again, the more oils you have, you want to go on your back? Okay. Go ahead. Pull your legs up. That is also another option. If you don't... She was on her hands and knees, but being on her back obviously means that whatever lube is going to run down uh, towards her back and not up into her mm. vagina. Smart. Fascinating. Mark is smart. So smart now Mark. I'm going to deflate the inflatable butt plug. It can inflate oh. to about that big, Ooh. which is more than enough to put a speculum a in her bottom. <laughs> Hand and pump. then it has a little release. You can actually buy inflatable butt plugs on eBay. I think this was like $6. <laughs> And then it searches out. A okay. So it's, it's, it's not like a pool toy where you're blowing it up with your it's, mouth. It's kind of not. Well, I have an inflatable pump, you know, an electric pump. So now what we're going to do is we're going to see. I don't it know if at this angle butt plug shape uh, that you're pushing yourself axis off. So I'm going to go ahead. A little give torpedo a little head shape. Okay. How are you doing? Okay. I need yeah. you to. Is that going in? Okay. Mm -hmm. Does that feel good? Mm-hmm. You're a dirty slut, mm. aren't you? Mm -hmm. That's my good girl. Nice. You're my hooker. Best <laughs> ever. <laughs> All right, going in. Having going a good in. time there, Les. I'm having a great time. Okay. Just having a good time. How's that feel? Mm -hmm. Is it smooth? Okay, very Shube. good. All right. Actually, um, can you uh, reach behind there? There's a purple. Reach around. Uh, a purple. Not a Hitachi. reach around. Is that plugged Trying in? Trying to fill the <laughs> Oh, it is. Go ahead and Ooh. just let her entertain herself a little bit. All right, now then, the inflatable butt plug is in. So now what you're going to do is very gently start a squeeze. So gentle. <laughs> Did you guys just see the look on her face? Her eyes just went about 75 meters open. Look at now she's giggling. Okay, ready for another one? Okay, here we go. Keep it. Is that enough or too much? You feel on the stretch? Mm -hmm. Okay, we don't want to do too much. Feel How you feel? You okay? Mm -hmm. All right, you want to relax a little bit? Two more reps. Okay. Two more reps. <laughs> Hang on a sec. Oh, wait, number. Oh, are you, are you touching that with your luby no, fingers? No, I'm touch it with, I can't read them. So oh, luby fingers. Sometimes love is less than nice. I got a you may jail. need some fucking advice right now. Oh, yeah. You could have just asked me. I could have pressed the button. Okay, fine. I didn't know which one it was. Oi. Where's the button at? So you want me to get yeah, started yeah, on start, this on my start. Okay, so we got a here. we got an email from Geek Girl, cool name, who <laughs> says, "Hello, perverted podcast. I Hello. recently found your show, and after one episode, number eighty-four, Towley has an orgasm. Uh, mm. That was a great. Or <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely my a Michelle. fan. <laughs> I love my Michelle." Most of my life, I have been very sexually shy. It took three times with my significant other before I would touch him back and not be red in the face. We've been together for just over six years, and he has helped me really start to reach out with my sexuality in ways I didn't think possible. Over the years, it's been my idea to start adding things like binding my hands, blindfolding me, and spanking. Mm. Through a few different books, it piqued my interest, and after more research to find out what it actually is about, I'm interested. Also, how I found you. My question is this, how do we go about learning the safe way to do things and learning to do it right? Both of us are inexperienced in this. And in another part of the email, I should also tell you that she said there's not, a, they don't know what, what's in their area. They're not certain if there's anything in their area. So what I got from it was that I don't think that they really looked. Or maybe they're just in the boondocks and they don't have any. It could very well be, in which case um, I thought this was a, 
a great thing to discuss because there may be a lot of people out there who either live in areas where there isn't a lot of big king community or they may be in a, a larger city but they just don't know how to go about it so my number one thing would always be fet life is right. an amazing resource Absolutely. um the groups in there you can find a group for everything from new people to the exact fetish that you are interested also, in. also youtube there are 101 videos that are tame but instructive absolutely um i'm just here letting mark go ahead and pump herself right now I oh nice go what ahead. were you saying what's that reb uh no there's actually um on youtube closer to the mic please oh, there we you. go hey look oh, we really? can actually hear me now uh boogie did uh, a wonderful set on youtube with uh it was um sexplanations wasn't it sexplanations yeah yeah dr doe yeah and Absolutely fantastic, really nice beginner level stuff that makes you a little bit more familiar with a lot of the terminology, a lot of what you can expect to get into the scene with. That's true. Absolutely. So YouTube, Fat Life, right. and my suggestion would be, I mean, if you're absolutely 100% sure that there's very little to no kink community in your area, then then you know, and the best you can hope for is to do maybe what Laz does and take a little two three hour drive to yeah. your nearest kink facility and avoid uh, guardrails that's <laughs> <laughs> definitely um i have a lot of experience in this um and we talked about fet life but more uh particular the fet life groups um whatever you are into you can just literally go to groups type in whatever your kink balloon fetish mm -hmm. cigar fetish knife play fire play wax play uh, anal gaping, whatever. You go to those groups, you start to read the posts, people will have pictures on their profiles of these kinks. Let me tell you about kinksters. We have humongous egos. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you reach out to somebody and you say, hey, I've had this multiple times. If you say, hey, I see your pictures and you do wax play. I get a lot with wax play and fire play because I have a lot of wax and fire play right. pictures and stuff. Needle play, stuff like that. And people will reach out. Hey, I'm new at this and you have amazing pictures. Can you maybe give me some tips? Most people in the community, unless, you know, they're just... They don't give a fuck about anybody but themselves. Will be more than happy Absolutely. to give you healthy instruction. Mm -hmm. I do it all the time. Over the last eight years, I've probably done forty or fifty of these emails where people have reached out. They've either seen a class or something like that, or they see some pictures and they say, "Hey, um, I don't have anyone in my community, so do you have any tips about this?" And I'll tell them, if "I'll. I have an ego. Thank you very much for <laughs> telling me how awesome I am." So that has been a really good resource, especially if you don't have a community. To just build that on. I've done it with rope. I've reached out to rope people while I was learning to rope. I saw their videos, and mm -hmm. uh, and I'm like, hey, how do you do this and that and that? And most people in the community on Fet Life, there's a lot of douchebags, but most people are going to be very forthcoming with information because they want you to do it safely. They want to grow the community. They want to be an education and a resource. Yeah, none of us want to hear any more of those posts where things go horribly wrong. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and the three things in particular that she mentioned, blindfolding, spanking, and binding her hands, uh, there's not a whole lot that can go wrong, but there are some things if you don't realize that you shouldn't leave somebody who's bound right, alone. Right. If you don't realize that you shouldn't do something really tight around the wrists or around the joints. Uh, but this is all such basic information that I just a cursory look through FetLife and yeah. YouTube is going to give you the basics that you're going to need to do it safe. After that, I mean, I, I, on a lot of areas in life, I will tell people, get a book, get a good book. Yeah. But this is one area in which I don't really recommend a whole lot of reading because my opinion is there isn't a whole lot out there. There's people standing up. Is it because you guys want to go up to the mic? No, oh. they're still working yeah. on the gaping. Oh, no, somebody Quirky wants to yet. talk. Hi, um, Quirky. When in doubt, also, just start exploring and communicate with your partner. It, you know, whatever you're reading, it may not be... Um, effective the same way on the partners so just don't forget that we're all humans and and just be curious and have fun with it so communicate and be curious are you guys ready for some anal magic Woo Woo so you're gonna have the speculum fully covered and once again if this doesn't work we had fun playing with an ass so uh mark knows to not feel disappointed or that i'm gonna be disappointed if this doesn't work everything is an attempt and we have a lot of fun doing it all right, are you ready, Pumpkin? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's... How's that feel? Mm -hmm. Can I push a little more? Mm -hmm. 
Notice that we're communicating a lot through this. That's okay. It doesn't affect our power exchange. Okay, a little more. Mm -hmm. All right, you're doing good. Okay, a little more. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh. <laughs> oh, you're a dirty girl, aren't you? <laughs> mm -hmm. The eagle has landed. <laughs> Very dirty. All right. Okay, now I'm about to where I'm going to go. And now. Okay, now if you look down there, you can see that is the inside of a glorious butthole. Okay, how's that feel? Okay, I'm going to try to make it secure now. This is the one thing about the plastic ones. All right. This is, Belle, I need you to stand here because I don't want to move this, this lever because it's going to stretch her out more. So I'm going to have you just hold that down here and just keep that pinch. You're going to have to put a lot of pressure on that. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to have a look, that the is the target butthole. Target is ready. <laughs> butthole. Applaud for the butthole. Yay, buttholes. Yay, buttholes. Now then. <laughs> now we will move on to the next phase. Oh my God. Okay. Okay, I have a target. Okay. Mark, I need you to scoot her over just a teeny bit the other way. A Scooter little your bit pooter. to your right. There you go. Okay, good. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> now then. What is that in your hand, Boogie? This, <laughs> this is my anal ninja blowgun. Oh, my God. And uh, so you'll know. put the little darts in here. So first, I'll see if I can stick it to the board. <laughs> that's Ooh. Oh, that just, that <laughs> I'm just perfect. sticking it to the show board so you can see it is an actual suction cut dart. Yes. I'm going to shoot her in the she's, butt once. She's covering she's it all. Covering <laughs> Move your hand, pumpkin. Okay, so first I'm going to shoot her in the butt cheek to see how it looks, right? <laughs> you hit her in the butt. Well, I wanted her to feel, I don't want to scare her Aww. you know, too much, so I wanted her to know how intense. We will now attempt. We're going to do, what is it? She She turned 23. So we're not going to do 23 darts, Aww. but let's just do uh, two and three makes five. So five. we will take five attempts uh -huh. to land a Nerf dart into her gaped butthole, which, by the way, looks amazing. Are you ready? Can I get a drum roll? <laughs> oh! oh! The first right shot! inside. Oh Perfect. Oh! Oh! Did you see her flip? Oh! Fighting! Oh, there Mark. it is! Oh my god! Good god! How does one practice this skill? Oh! oh. 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 Top. Is oh. I'm top! Amazing! I am good. That is. That. Look at her. She's still. <laughs> and that is our show. We'll just leave it there. I'll just oh leave it god. there. <laughs> Thank you, Threshold, for providing this perverted playground for us to record in. If you are in the Los Angeles or surrounding areas, visit Threshold.org and find out about joining their kinky family. Let's just give a huge thank you to Mark for letting us Way do to go, it. Mark. Way to go, Mark. Way to go. Wait, I need a tool. Who's a tool? I'm taking your drink straw, <laughs> pumpkin. <laughs> now she's got to pluck it out. <laughs> pluck it out of there. Oh my god. Uh, what? Oh, oh. Ooh. Yeah, it's like in. operation. Oh. <laughs> oh. Hey, uh, kicky operation. Uh, oh. Your butthole? Uh. Your butthole oh. activity. And the dart yeah. flicks yeah. out! Yeah. And it's out! Right. Frame it! Do it again! Do it again! We like it! We like it! Thank you to Unger and to everybody in the chat room! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Lads, thank you so much for being here and bringing thank us you, your, Kathy and your Boogie lovely and voice and, your, and yes, Mark and, and everybody. everybody. Thank you. Thank you. I to love the, the show so audience. much. If you have questions, comments, or ideas, please email us at pervertedpodcast at gmail.com and visit pervertedpodcast.com. And you know what? If you feel like helping the show, go to patreon.com forward slash pervertedpodcast. Good job. Thank you, Mark. Oh, that was wonderful. Go to iTunes and, and review finally, it, and rate it. Yes. Yeah, two years of doing this. We have had so much fun. We always have fun. Oh my God, Mark, you're beautiful. Your butthole looks great. <laughs> We're gonna use that a little bit later. Um, well, what are you gonna do? We worked for it. <laughs> you're damn right. Work on it a little bit later. And uh, finally, so we have our intro song, and we're gonna actually pick. This is our actual first Zua recording that we made. It's a demo recording uh, of a song that's called Mushrooms and Sunflower. So we will be back next week for show 105. 
We're Please. more mayhem for another two years of this crap. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, perverted podcast audience, thank you and good night. Good night. <laughs> Little bitty mushroom, little bitty mushroom, under log, next to tree, friend of a frog, got a little scared when sniffed by a dog, wave to a snail who's out for a dog, it gets me through the day to have some friends. There's adventure on the horizon, the birds who tell their tales, of tigers by the ocean riding on the backs of whales. I'm sure that's pretty nifty, said my friend the wise old deer. As long as there's some grass, I think it's not too bad to be right here. Pretty little sunflower, pretty little sunflower, under cloud, makes her sad, cries to cow, gets a big hug from a ladybug, and a pizza pie from a sheep named Doug. It gets me through the day to have some friends. There's adventure on the horizon, the birds who tell their tales. Of tigers by the ocean riding on the backs of whales I'm sure that's pretty nifty, said my friend the wise old deer As long as there's some grass, I think it's not too bad to be right here Just add sugar and Go for Stampede, go for Stampede, go for, go for, go for Stampede, go for Stampede, go for, go for, go for, go for muck because we can just out of reach of the farmer's hand Stampede, go for 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 I do declare it gets me through the day to have some friends. <laughs>